It's time now for the best high school sports action from the WBCB Sports Network. Catch the best games from Bucks and Mercer County at WBCBSports.com and our Facebook page. Your home for high school sports is right here at WBCB 1490. USA, Peruzzi Automotive Group, Fletcher's Garage, Jammer Doors and Windows. Thanks to Puss in Boots Tavern for making portions of today's game possible. The Trentonian, the Trenton Thunder, the Pensbury Baseball Parents Club, DiLorenzo's Pizza on New Falls Road. And looking forward to this matchup. I feel like this is maybe not a rivalry per se, but there's definitely some juice when North Penn and Pensbury take the field, whether it's high school football, basketball, high school softball. Um, and these two teams, both of them with decent starts to the season. Pensbury with four wins and three losses. North Penn at five and one so far on the season. And a pretty nice pitching matchup for North Penn. You have junior Trevor Lugara, who's been a three-year starter and got some great varsity experience last season and even opened some eyes as a freshman for this North Penn team and today he will be facing Keller Bradley for the Pensbury Falcons and Keller Bradley a youngster a guy we've talked about as uh, his velocity really gets up there into the 90s and it's exciting to see that matchup between these two top arms for both North Penn and for Pensbury um, Top of the rotation going at it today, Gus. Yeah, power of the aces. See your yep. best against our best. See who comes out of top. It's some of the best times, you know. I, I, a lot of people don't like it, but I love a pitching battle. A low-scoring game, very close. One, two, three inning, one, two, three inning. A lot of people think that's not entertaining, but as a baseball purist, I like to call myself, that's some of the best baseball, and I hope to see it somewhat today between both these aces. Yeah, that is a brand of ball that I like as well. We'll Absolutely. see if we get that today again. Lugara for the North Penn Knights, Bradley for the Pensbury Falcons, and Pensbury up and down. When uh, we first opened the season for high school baseball on BCB, it was the big rivalry, Pensbury hosting into Chamonix, and unfortunately for the Falcons, they fall to the Redskins 14-4 in that game, and after that, it's been win and lose. And uh, last game we had on BCB, was a, a good one for Pensbury. They turned it around with a big win over Truman, Ben. Yeah, they got a huge win over Truman, 14-4. to A Jordan Zerniak home run as well. A huge win. And you look on Monday, the game was supposed to be here at 4 o'clock, but we had an eclipse, so the game was moved to 7 o'clock down in Diamond Nation in Jersey. And Pensbury was not able to come up on that one. They lost that one. And what was also a pitching... Um, Battle two to one. They got a couple hits. Schaefer got a hit. Nolan Klanko got a hit. Charlie Cordisco, Colin Kelleher all got hits. Jordan Zerniak was able to record an RBI. However, that was the last time they will have Schaefer for a little bit with his injury. Yeah, unfortunately, Schaefer banged up again. Bark at the park. And what, Max going to be running the bases? He's kind of setting the tone here. Let's for, go. You got it. You got to have the best bat boy in the <laughs> SOL run the bases. It's just simply you have to. Swing and a drive, there deep down. Goes. 
Oh, and there goes Rookie. He's just so excited. Nice job. Hey. That might be the most exciting part of the game today, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think so. We're going to have a good one yeah, here. we are. And, uh, again, two teams that have uh, a little bit of zest. And uh, right now, we'll step aside and return for the first pitch of today's game. You know, McCaffrey's Food Market is exceptional every day, and they are proud to serve you since 1986. They're a local hometown business. They support your community, whether it's helping flood victims or holding fundraisers for the American Cancer Society or employing our local high school students. McCaffrey's is always there. They have the finest products, prime cuts of meat, a prepared food department where everything is made fresh daily, and also a fresh seafood department. Visit McCaffrey's Food Market near you in Yardley, Newtown, New Hope, Princeton, West Windsor, Gladwin, and Doylestown. They are exceptional every day, and they are local and proud of it. An injured knee might look pretty simple, but there's a whole person behind that injury. One who misses the feel of his jump shot and spending time with friends on the court. It's not enough just to heal. He needs to get back out there. At Trinity Health, we're here to help you reach your goals. We combine all the knowledge and expertise of a national health system with personalized health care that treats the individual behind the injury. Because we see all of you. Think banking hasn't changed? Think again. At Penn Community Bank, we've been helping communities thrive for 150 years, providing the latest financial tools to reach your goals. From our nationally recognized access checking that offers the peace of mind of no overdrafts, to student and free checking plus options with perks that will make you wonder what you did without them, like early direct deposit, overdraft grace, and Zelle. Penn Community Bank. Here we grow. Learn more at PennCommunityBank.com slash products. Just before we stepped away, Tyler think America banking hasn't changed. Think again. I mentioned the eclipse on Monday. Pensbury moving their game. Community now Bank. We've been helping communities thrive for 150 win, years. Provide for the Pensbury Falcons and looking to get things going again against the North Penn Knights. Besides the eclipse, Ben, the weather has been an issue with a lot of rain washing out a bunch of games and stuff that we had scheduled on WBCB. And now these teams are gonna to have to reschedule and figure out how to get all of this action in. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge. It was like a whole week that um, oh. kind of rained Monday through Friday it was yeah. a couple of weeks ago. It was like a monsoon we got hit with day in and day out. It was horrible, but Just, we're here. Yeah. And today also looks like the weather is a little dicey, potentially. 1490 forecast says there's a chance of some rain moving in around 6 o'clock today. And that forecast has changed throughout the day with... Uh, at one point, it seemed like there might be rain earlier in the afternoon, but things looking good right now. Let's take a look at starting lineups. First for the North Penn Knights, leading off and playing shortstop is Kevin Brace. Batting second and catching Chase Jones for North Penn. Ben Farley bats third and plays first base with Mason Coyne in the cleanup spot and the designated hitter. Henry Wetzel bats fifth. He's in right field with Jeremiah Krieger in center field batting sixth. Logan Wainick at second base bats seventh with Chris Bennis playing second. Excuse me, Wainick is at third, batting seventh. Bennis is at second base batting eighth, and A.J. Briggs rounds out the starting lineup for North Penn, batting ninth, and Briggs playing left field today. And they're facing the big righty Keller Bradley. So you got the righty-lefty matchup. The righty going for the Falcons. And the big lefty for North Penn today. Defensively for Pensbury, Eric David playing first base. Colin Kelleher at second base. Ryan Weber playing shortstop today with Dylan Hirsch at third. Jordan Zerniak out in left field with Charlie Cordisco playing center. Gavin Hawks in right. And Tyler Baraski doing the catching for Keller Bradley. Yeah, you see a lot of defensive changes in the infield for Pensbury with the loss of Schaefer. You see Keller, who stays at second, was inserted into this lineup uh, a couple games after opening day. Weber making his uh, his starting 
just starting here in his junior year. Um, he moves over to shortstop to fill in for Schaefer and Hirsch, who started the year at second. That's in DH and is now at third. And a new update in our weather forecast. 50% chance of rain at 5. Okay. So. Well, we got the tent up, and we're, hopefully we're ready to go. I'll we'll be able to get the game in. Get maybe some ponchos. We'll be good. We got ponchos? No, I wish. The one kit, we had like three of them. Kevin Brace into the batter's box for the North Penn Knights. As Keller Bradley set to go. And the righty fires away in there for strike one. Balls and strikes today called by home plate umpire Patrick Jones. And on the base pass is Russ, to be Russ Blickfield. Our blue crew bounced foul by Brace. So coming in today, oh, uh, Knights five and one overall, three and one in suburban one league play. And Kevin Brace, an everyday starter as a sophomore last season and verbally committed to Lehigh University. Wow. Looking at an 0-2 down low from Bradley. Wind is blowing straight in from left today. We are getting slammed by the wind, so expect maybe some balls traveling to the right. Yeah, certainly looks Not like a lot flying out. Be hard to send one out, swing and a miss. And Kevin Brace, a strikeout victim. One away in the top of the first. That's a good start from Bradley. We saw earlier this season when we were here on the broadcast, I believe it was the Chamonix game, uh, Bradley got off to a hot start and then kind of in the second, tailed off a little bit, lost his stuff a little. And now up to bat, catcher Chase Jones. Nice breaking pitch by Bradley. That's in there for strike one. He's got a lot of velocity, a lot of great movement. His thing is the command, and if he can command it, he could be special out there. Jones batted 311 in 90 plate appearances last year. That's straight up the middle. A diving stop by Ryan Weber, but he has no play. Just knocks it down. And an infield base hit for Chase Jones. He's aboard with one down for Ben Farley. Not hit hard, but right up the middle. Yeah, you see Keller there jumping out of the way. He didn't want to get hit. And if he did, it might have been down in his lower legs. But I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like Keller is has a little bit more simple of a windup right now. I feel like there's a little bit more movement in the path. Right now, it's giving a little bit more simple and compact, which sometimes you need for a pitcher who needs to just find some rhythm or get into his groove. Just a little tweak like that could do it. I'm not a... I'm not 100% sure. I have to look back at his other starts. Courtesy runner for the catcher is Barnes now at first. They check on him, and then Bradley pours that one in there for a strike. That was my favorite part as being a catcher. I didn't have to run the bases. I'm fat. <laughs> Third year starter, Ben Farley, and uh, the first senior at the plate for North Penn. A lot of dogs here today on Bark at the Park. Some adoptable puppies. They are adorable. Adoptable pets. Rookie, the bat dog from the Trenton Thunder. It is a party. The 1-1. One, one. That's strike two. Ooh. The runner goes and sliding safely in there is Barnes. Not a great throw from Baraski. A little high and away from Kelleher who was able to make a good catch over there. If he was able to apply that tag, the runner may have been out. It would have been close if he was able to make the tag, but couldn't. Yeah, so Barnes went on the throw. It was a called strike at the plate, so a one-two count to Farley. Yeah, and it, the, the throw was there. If it was just a little bit lower, it would have had him. Just a little bit high, Weber had a curve ball, weak popper. David handles it. Yeah, just off the hands there. My, 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 my fact was pretty much done there anyway. My little, uh, <laughs> my little tidbit. Nugget. Thank you. I was having a brain fart there. I couldn't think of it. There's just so many so, dogs barking right now. It caught me off the guard. Now up to bat. Cleanup man, Mason Coyne. A little mound visit there for Bradley. Two outs now. Coyne batting 400 in his first 11 plate appearances. And sometimes they have him play one of the corner infield spots when he's not the DH as he is today. 
Bradley checks Barnes and delivers. Just a little bit wide. Coin another junior. So you look at the top of the lineup, they got three juniors and one senior. But as we mentioned, off to a five and one start for North Penn, the 1-0. Grounded down the line, Hirsch has it, throws across the diamond in time to get Coin for out number three. So through a half inning, no runs, one hit, and one runner left on base for the North Penn Knights. The Pensbury Falcons come into bat in a scoreless game. It's the McCaffrey's game of the day on the WBCB Sports Network, and we'll keep it right here. Remind you that spring is here, and it's time to view the world through Jammer Doors, a family-owned and operated local business since Babe Ruth started playing for the Yankees in 1920, and today Jammer Doors continues to swat home run sales, service, and installation of garage doors and openers, entry doors, patio doors, storm doors, and windows, and they do rain or garage doors, steel or aluminum, crafted for dependable, long-lasting service. Jammer Doors, they do their own work and installation. They don't use subcontractors, and that saves you money. Avoid the big box stores and save with Jammer Doors. Visit their showroom, 2850 Brunswick Pike, on Business Route 1, and uh, over in the Yardley Grist Mill at 10 North Main Street, and coming soon, a magnificent new showroom on Route 1, opposite the Lawrence Shopping Center, Jammer Doors and Windows. Thanks also to the Peruzzi Auto Group Complete Automotive Service. Trust the Peruzzi Auto Group value and service on all makes and models. Free multi-point inspection on your vehicle with any paid service. A 10% military and law enforcement discount on any service performed. You buy three tires, get the fourth free. All service performed by certified technicians with the Peruzzi Group. Peruzzi big comfy waiting rooms at their dealer Dealerships, free Wi-Fi, early drop-off, Peruzzi service. Visit a Peruzzi dealership on Business Route 1 in Fairless Hills, where their business is you. Charlie Cordisco in the box for the Pensbury Falcons. Takes one up and away from Trevor Lugara. First pitch from the lefty misses. And looks like Lugara, kind of a quick worker. It's bounced right back to him and throws over to Farley to get Cordisco on the grounder right back to the mound, one away. Cordisco, now we got Gavin Hawks and Dylan Hirsch up for the Pensbury Falcons here in the bottom of the first. Evan Hawks. And first one to Hawks is outside for a ball. Whole different top two for Pensbury coming into this one. The 1 0. Of course, poured the, in there by Lugara. Of for course, a strike. The, the injury to Schaefer has a part of that, but New Duhol as well. The 1 1 popped foul out of play. Man, this wind is whipping right now. Evan Hawks, but does he have a brother, Gavin? They did have Gavin. They did, yeah, I thought so. Oh my, this win. The one, two. Catches the outside corner and gets Hawks looking. Good pitch there to work the outside zone. A strikeout for Lugara. Two down, nobody on it for Dylan Hirsch. Dylan Hirsch playing third base today. Falcons moving some people around on the infield because of the injury to Schaefer. You look at North Penn defensively, you got Farley at first, Venice at second, Brace at shortstop with Wainick playing third base. And that's an up into the air, down the line at first base and handled there by first baseman Ben Farley. Makes the catch for out number three. And it is inning, a Chris. one, two, three inning. Pensbury set down in order, no runs, no hits, and nobody left on. And after one inning of play, scoreless here from Vic Napolitano Field between the Pensbury Falcons. Being the latest financial tools to reach your goals. From our nationally recognized access checking that offers the peace of mind of no overdrafts, to student and free checking plus options with perks that will make you wonder what you did without them. Like early direct deposit, overdraft grace, and Zelle. Penn Community Bank, here we grow. 
Learn more at pencommunitybank.com slash products. Hi, Merrill Reese reminding you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609 609- 882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Welcome back to Pensbury High School. The North Penn Knights led by head coach Kevin Monero in his 13th season. And here in the top of the second, Wetzel, Krieger, and Wainick to face Bradley. And Wetzel turns to try to bunt one Bunted foul for strike one. WBCB, your spot on the radio dial for Phillies baseball. And the Phillies and the Pirates gonna do battle tonight, weather yeah, permitting. That's gonna be a tough one because the Pirates are playing really good. Nine and three, their overall record really playing above what uh, everybody thought Pittsburgh was gonna play. Oh, one breaking pitch that drops in there. Don't hit Gus. the dogs. Get there. Foul the way by Wetzel. It's Bark at the Park Day today, so they have adoptable pets just behind us uh, with a tent with some cute little puppies. See, Rookie see. just ran on the softball field to get the foul ball. Let's go. That was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Life. Rookie the bat dog from the Trenton Thunder. 0-2 oh, oh, is nice lined ball. out to right, in for a base hit. Nice Falls piece. in front of Hawks. Nice piece of hitting there, went down low, poked it into right field. So one on, nobody out. For Jeremiah Krieger. I got a good feeling there's going to be a lot of fly foul balls flying over our heads today with the wind blowing literally right into us. For the junior center fielder, uh, first year as an everyday starter. A significant role player last year. Right now, yeah, last year for the Knights, they went 21 and 6. They lost to Father Judge in the PIAA State Semi. Hmm. Heck of a run. And that time Bradley missing just a bit wide. 1490 radar saying 14 mile per hour wind right now. 27 mile per hour gusts. However, it also says it feels like 70, which is not true. So Those gusts are uh, causing some havoc out here today and potentially could be an issue with any balls that are up in the air. We've had a couple of weak little pop flies but nothing that seemed like uh, it was affected by the wind. 2-0 pitch outside, ball three. Craiger at the plate, I'll Wetzel at first. I'll tell you what, I can't hear people say wind gusts and not think they're saying my name. The T <laughs> is like silent in that word. <laughs> Keller's got to battle back here from the 3-0 count. Big pitch here and he misses down low, a three pitch walk. And now there's runners at first and second for Logan Wainick. We've seen it from before from Bradley, a good first and then start to lose it a little bit in the second. Hopefully he can avoid that trend once here, but it's looking like we're starting to move in that direction a little bit with two quick base runners, a base hit and a four pitch walk. Yeah, showing fun here too. Here we go. Small ball, I love it. Wainick, a freshman, takes outside. Losing that command to that's five straight balls thrown by Bradley. And as a freshman plays multiple infield positions, does some catching and pitching, so pretty versatile for the youngster who right now shows bunt. And takes down low. Six straight balls. Yeah, yeah Pensbury needs a mound visit right now. And so they call timeout and head out to talk with their junior starter, Keller Bradley. Yeah, and I think uh, Pacey is already sh sending somebody out to the bullpen. Yeah. Start getting loose, number four. Yeah, that is Aiden Kenny. Yeah. He's done a lot of uh, good 
job early in the season for Pensbury coming in relief for them. And we mentioned it's Bark at the Park Day today. Rookie the Bat Dog is here at Pensbury High School. And of course, Rookie the Bat Dog is part of the Thunder Fun. And the Trenton Thunder, they're back for a 2024 season. They start on June the 4th. Catch all the fun and excitement, including Rookie the Bat Dog. Always a great time at a Thunder game all throughout the summer. For ticket info, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com. They got Dollar Dog Night. A lot of great stuff yeah, the voice with the of Thunder. The voice of the Thunder, one of our very own, Mike Warren, play-by-play -play over there at Trent Thunder. And they've done alternate jerseys for their golden retrievers. Absolutely fantastic. Hey, guys. 2 0 pitches in there. Yeah, they call themselves the Goldens, yeah. I think, for select games uh -huh. this year. So are they getting rid of the pork roll knights? Oh, no. No, they're still going to have pork roll knights. They're just not going to have pork roll uniforms. But pork they will have these um, that good anyway. uniforms um, honoring the golden retriever bat dogs. The 2 1 is fouled at the plate. Yeah, and it even evens at two balls, two strikes. After six straight balls there. Keller able to bat it back. Two strikes here. One fouled off. It's a lot of balls, Gus. And Pensbury still looking for their first out. Here in the top of the second, so big pitch coming. And the 2-2 fouled back. Nice job by Wainick. Hang in there. too close to take and he sends it back to the backstop. Yeah, anytime you get two strikes, you have to be able to protect and that's, if it's close, you gotta swing at it and that's what he's doing right there. Good pitch though by Keller. And the count holds it two, two, two on. Nobody out yet in the second. Sent sky high, short center field. Cordisco ranging over and will make the grab. Had a long run out there. And Cordisco, though, easily gets under it. Yeah, and that's, that's, it looks like a routine play for Cordisco out there. But with the way this wind is whipping, those balls get up there. That too. That can go anywhere. So he did a really good job. He saw it out of, he saw it quickly off the bat. It didn't look like he struggled with it at all. Realized that the wind was going to take it. And that, that was a great job. That shows you what a solid defensive center fielder can do for you. So one down now, two on, and up to the plate steps Chris Bennis. And Bennis takes a first pitch strike. Bradley right in there. Pacey jumps out of the dugout to reposition Zerniak in left. And Bennis playing pretty much straight away and takes another strike. Bradley's dialed back in, he's thrown a couple and four strikes in a, no, five strikes in a row now. And he gave up a base hit and a walk, but now battling back in front of Bennis. From the belt, the 0-2. Struck him out, tipped Ooh. into the glove of Boraski, who completes the strikeout. The second of the day for Bradley, and the second out here in the top of the second, a big one, and it brings up the nine hole hitter, A.J. Briggs. Yeah, Dogs people, barking for the K. People don't realize how hard that is for Baraska to hold on to that. As a former catcher, sometimes it could just be the littlest tip. You could throw that ball off. So to be able to hang on to that, great job by Baraska there. Another mound visit here with two outs. And Bradley gets a pat on the back from his catcher. Maybe just a quick reminder about where they are as far as the lineup is concerned. You want to make sure that that or maybe a little miscommunication with the signs. You want to stop this or threat just, right here. Is the first one a little what, uh, bit down low. They just want to see what they're having for dinner after at least. You never know. Some, some pork roll chick chat, I think chat, chat out there. I think they're big Chipotle guys. Uh, I love Chipotle too. I haven't gone there in a while though because my girlfriend hates it. But back to the game, Keller, if he can get out of this after getting two men on, no outs, no damage done, that'd be huge. No question, and the 1-0 fouled straight back and evens the count. A ball and a strike to Briggs. A bunch of balls being fouled straight back from North Penn in this inning. They're right on Bradley, just can't 
get enough of it. Briggs making his first varsity start today. And in a big spot in the second inning, the 1-1 catches the corner. Briggs will attend Penn State next year as a business analytics major. Mm. Maybe can bring those analytics to the baseball diamond. Little Gabe Kaplan. <laughs> and a great student at North Penn. Reddy's Bradley's, here comes the one, two. Breaking pitch up the middle. And taking it to the bag unassisted right there is Ryan Weber. A heads up play by the Pensbury shortstop. And he gets Briggs with the unassisted ground out. And after giving up a base hit and a walk, North Penn unable to advance a runner. So they get no runs, they do get a hit. They leave two out there on base in the second. And after an inning and a half, still scoreless from Pensbury High School, it's the McCaffrey's game of the night. And serving great food for decades, still cooking the best stepped up comfort food in Bucks County. I'm talking about Puss in Boots Tavern, 934 Trenton Road in Fairless Hills. Enjoy the ambience of the Pocono Room with their own private bar or their heated outdoor patio. They also have daily specials, including Taco Tuesday, Comfort Wednesdays. That's where they have their homemade meatloaf, roast pork Thursdays, their fresh seafood festival every Friday, and the Boots traditional hot dog Saturdays with dollar hot dogs served all day with your choice of chili, cheese, kraut, or onions. And Sundays are cheesesteak Sundays, daily happy hour Monday through Friday. And that is all at Puss in Boots Tavern. Great for graduation parties. The tradition continues with Puss in Boots. And up to the plate for the Pensbury Falcons steps Jordan Zerniak to start the bottom of the second. And Lugaro serves one up, and that's sliced foul down the third base line. Oh, it's sliced. Had a little bit of a hook on it. Otherwise, looked like that might have been in for some extra bases for Zerniak. He's got great speed. Incredible speed. He'll be followed by Eric David and Ryan Weber. Fast as a Puma. Oh, one takes a strike. Umpire has a very slow wind up to the strike and like leaves to guess him a little bit. He brings his hand up super slow. That's a suspense. The 0-2. That's not a strike. No question about that one. Up high, ball and two strikes. No wind up needed for that one from Blue. The 1-2. Taken out to right field for a base hit. And Zerniak cruises into first. Lead off runner for the Falcons in the bottom of the second. Brings up first baseman Eric David. Nice piece of hit in there by Zerniak. Just able to really twist the hips, get inside of that ball. And pull it into right field for a single. Great job. Zerniak at first base heading to Lackawanna College. Ooh. And the ball up high and Zerniak takes off. Ball bounced off the catcher's mitt. And Zerniak saw an opportunity and took it. He steals second. That was high risk, high reward from Zerniak. We were just saying though, he's fast as a Puma. Puma. We calling him that, the Puma? <laughs> I like, Why not? I like it. The 1-0. Ooh, got on his hands. And David takes it out to left. He's falling in no man's land. And that will fall in for another base hit. Ooh, combo, Moving up man. to third is Zerniak. And David stops at first, so runners at the corners with nobody out in the second for the Falcons and a, Ryan Weber up to bat. That was a blooper that kind of fooled all of us. I don't think any of us thought that ball was gonna drop. It did, fell right in no man's land, as Gus said. Back-to-back -back hits, runners on first and third. I also like to call that the Bermuda Triangle. You know, you got like the short, depending on what either side, you got the in corner infielder, you got the middle infielder, and the corner outfielder, and it just goes right in between them. And the dead zone is, I like to call the Bermuda Triangle. Ball up high to Weber. Weber at the plate with Baraski on deck. Both sink, balls fall. 
Bermuda Triangle. Plates crash. R.I.P. Amelia Earhart. Lagara throws over and checks David. And that's going to be a big key for with him on the mound. He's a lefty, so he get to keep a good eye on everybody on first. But right now, he's got a man on third, so. 1-0 oh, oh. in there, oh, and the job. runner goes halfway down. David stopped halfway and drew the throw, and that allows Zerniak to score from third. Yeah, that's an a double steal. An absolute fantastic job by David. In those situations, you can either just try to beat it out or slow down halfway and try to draw the throw, and that's exactly what David did. Distracted the shortstop, caught him up a little bit in the hands, and runner scores, David safe on second. An excellent job by Pensbury. And the throw was not handled cleanly oh. by North Penn either, and that was all the Zerniak needed. We saw him steal that bag on a deflected ball. And this one is sent sky high by Weber. Yeah, it's a tough play though, because in that wind. And Wetzel, the right fielder, finally tracks it down, gets under it, makes the grab. David and kind of one down. David kind of paused in between first and second on his way up to second, added some time for Zerniak to get a good jump. So some high IQ there by David on the base paths as well. And David is at second base with one down now for Tyler Baraski. Lines that one, actually goes off the end of the bat, picked up at third by Warnick or Waynick, and the throw is just in time to get Baraski at first, advancing to third is David on the play. Man, that and is. there's two down, that was close. That's tough. That's one of those times where it's like, you don't have replay, so it's so close, you just gotta go judgment call. And sadly, the umpire has to be at second base because there's a runner on second and third, and third now, but yeah, just uh, tough. Yeah. tough for Penn Bay. And up high to Michael Mercora, the Falcon DH. There were some different names flowing around of who could have, who could fill in as designated hitter with that spot open now with Schaefer's absence. Michael McCarra uh, earns that spot back as he owned that spot for first game and didn't return after that until today. Offered at that one, came up empty, one ball, one strike. Oh, Eric David dancing off third as that one missing up a little bit. Two balls and a strike. Lugara winds and delivers and it's tipped off the mask of Jones back to the backstop. And the count now even two balls, two strikes with two down in the bottom of the second. Cora fouls that one back, stays alive, keeps the count at 2-2. Falcons got the first run of the afternoon on a double steal that played in Jordan Zerniak to make it a 1-0 game, the 2-2. Just a bit off the plate, good take there by Mercora. Man, that's a tough one to lay off in a 2-2 count. But we got full. 3-2. Another foul back. Rokora, some of those are, look like they might be a little bit up in the zone, but too close to take. Yeah, absolutely. Keeps himself alive up there. And an opportunity here to drive in a big run with Eric David at third base. Big pitch. The payoff pitch. Sent another foul. sky high and will drift foul out of play. And How many straight fouls has he hit? I think it's like six. It's like a little bit of a uh, Brett Myers flashback from 2008 playoffs. Obviously, McCoy is not the pitcher. Like one, but I know history. Now you need the payoff though. The 3 2, there it is. Uh, now sharply hit right to shortstop and brace. Makes easy work of it. It's Philly's history, Gus. Well, sounded good off the crack of the bat, but a ground out for Michael Mercora. 
And the Pensbury Falcons are finally set down in the bottom of the second, but they do get the first run of the day. That run comes... Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River... Earth Pen, nothing. Back with more here on the WBCB Sports Network. Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Evan Brace leading off the third inning for North Penn. It's starting to spit a little, Chris. And we expected some rain. And it's 427 is early. Starting to get a little bit of it. Mention we got Phillies baseball on WBCB tonight. Topper said there's a window. Is that right? There's okay. always a window. <laughs> there is always a window. That's true. Unfortunately, sometimes you got to sit around for a bunch of hours before you get that window. They had it, one of the if longest they, rain delays. I, if I'm not doing that again tonight. I'm not doing that. I mean, they have the four-game series, doubleheader tomorrow maybe. There's possibilities, but if they make us sit four hours again, I'm not. All right, Brace in the batter's box, and Bradley nasty. offers a curveball, and Hirsch has to come charging in from third base, grab it, and throw in time to get Brace at first. Nice play. That ball had a lot of drop, and great play over there by Hirsch. Took a little long to throw it. If he, had, if he got to have his glove quicker, he might have been able to be a little safer, but was able to make the out nonetheless. Great it play, like great a, pitch. Just a touch of indecision there between Hirsch and Bradley on the mound as to who was going to grab that one. But they get the first out in the top of the third and bring Chase Jones to the plate. I think the worst part about this rain, it's coming right into us. Yeah, the wind blown element. Right into us. It's going to be an issue. Jones takes strike one, a ball and a strike. First time up, Jones had a base hit and a stolen base. Don't want these dogs to get wet. And takes strike two from Bradley. Jones's older brother was a left-handed pitcher at North Penn, class of 2019. The one-two nice. called third strike gets him looking. Well, no one knew, nobody knew how many outs there were. Everyone started to walk off the mound. Or walk off the field for Penn's Bay. There's only two outs, but a nice strikeout. His third of the day, his first backwards K for Bradley. Stuff starting to look a lot better here in the third than it did in the second, obviously. Up to bat, Ben Farley for the Knights takes a strike. Farley popped to first in his first time up today. Bradley has set the 0-1. Sent straight back. And an 0-2 count to Farley. Bradley ready, kicks and fires and gets him swinging. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Keller Bradley to end the third and set down the Knights in order in the top of the third. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on base. We're through two and a half innings of high school baseball, and it's the Pensbury Falcons in front of the North Penn Knights, one to nothing. Today's game... Hi, Merrill Reese remind you to... Brought to you by Thunder Baseball. Catch all the fun with the Trenton Thunder. Ticket information at trentonthunder.com. That's trentonthunder.com.
And DiLorenzo is the Berg Pizza. 8919 New Falls Road in Levittown, owned and operated by third generation family member Tyler DiLorenzo. And Tyler uses the same recipes as great grandparents did back in the 1940s in Trenton's famous Chambersburg section. Try the only original Trenton tomato pie or other great gourmet pizzas, including their mustard pies, soups, fresh salads, hot sandwiches, homemade pasta dishes, all served in a very safe, clean environment. Eat in or take out. Call 215-943-2605. 215-943-2605. De Lorenzo's, the Berg Pizza. They also do catering for all affairs. De Lorenzo's in the Vermilion Square, 8919 New Falls Road in Levittown. Open Tuesday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Friday and Saturdays open till 9. Sundays open noon to 8.30 p.m. Closed on Mondays. De Lorenzo's, the Berg Pizza. First pitch in there. A little up from Lugara. 1-0 count. Here to Colin Kelleher, who starts the Falcons off in the bottom of the third. Yeah, we got uh, some more rain coming in, and some rain into the booth now. And that is fair down the first base line by Kelleher, extra bases, and he'll cruise into second with a stand-up double. Oh yeah, this rain's coming right into us. Yeah, with the wind, this uh, we have a tent up, <laughs> oh, man. but it's not providing a whole lot of cover. We need a screen right here in front of us. You know, I, I want to pull this table back a little bit here. Hey Gus, can you help pull this? Pull the table back. Enough with touch? the umbrella, Chris or Gus, whoever you are. Here we go. It's not a might help us just a touch as Charlie Cordisco. Now at bat for the Falcons. And Lugara delivers one, a bunt attempt. And Cordisco offers at it, strike one. Yeah, the other thing we gotta keep our eye on is our camera. Sorry, guys. It's okay. Nobody wants to listen to me anyway. <laughs> Popped up, foul back behind us. I did have a poncho, one of our BCB ponchos, but it got drained in oil. Cause of oil. oil. Yeah, oil spilled in my car the one day. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole goddamn mess. You, you got your, pon your poncho got drowned. I, I need a new poncho. I knew the one kid had like four ponchos in it. I should have took some out of that one. O2 the count. The delivery up high. Cordisco bounced one back to the mound his first time up. Evan Hawks waiting on deck for the Falcons. The one two from Lugara is through on the right side. Stopping at third is going to be Kelleher. So he moves up a bag, Cordisco at first base. Runners at the corners for Evan Hawks. Hawks got caught looking his first time up. Falcons scoring the only run so far in the game on a double steal that sent home Jordan Zerniak, but opportunity for some more, possibly now in the bottom of the third with two on and nobody out. Hawk, Hawks takes up high for a ball. That time it's fouled straight back. Well, we're gonna have to make some decisions here at some point. <laughs> For our, for the say, the, the benefit of our broadcast and our equipment and stuff, yeah. um, we might not be there quite yet, but we're getting there. The yes. way this rain is coming down, it's like all sideways, and the runner goes. 
The ball is lifted into the air by Hawks in foul territory and a oh, nice play it. over there by Wetzel. The right fielder makes the grab, but tagging on the play is Kelleher. So a heads up base running play follows the foul pop catch. So Hawks is out on the foul pop. Colin Kelleher tags up from third to make it two to nothing. That was a really good catch over there. Great way to read the ball. He was over a lot as well. Was able to go over to the wall, leaning a little over the wall to make that catch. I mean, that was kind of like that Castellanos catch from last year. Do you catch it and then potentially allow the runner to score? And now the rain really starts to come down as the ball is sent to right field and it's caught out there by Wetzel. So Wetzel with another good grab. That's out number two. Yeah, I don't know how long they're going to be playing for a little bit. Yeah, and meanwhile, we got um, our equipment getting wet. Gus doing a nice job of uh, using the umbrellas to our benefit as much as possible. But. We got two umbrellas, a tent, as that's grounded to shortstop and handled there by Kevin Brace. He flips it over to Bennis to record the out at second for out number three. Let's see what so they do Hirsch here. grounds out right now, and now the officials talking about the uh, status of the game right now. Checking the mound. Checking the mound and. Yes, thank you. We got our papers blowing around everywhere. Are they gonna play? Are they gonna play? We will play on as we go to the bottom, the, the top of the fourth. Falcons up two nothing. And just as we say that the wind, the, the rain starts to die down just a touch. McCaffrey's game of the day on WBCB. We're trying to hang in there. The bus doing a good job over here. No question about it. Umbrella's starting to move a little. Well, hang on. My papers are getting wet. Like my score sheet, my the ads that we do. Again, today's game brought to you by the Trenton Thunder and DiLorenzo's Pizza. Hey, that's smart, Gus. Yeah. Uh-oh, maybe not. All right, so top of the fourth, and Mason Coyne at the plate for the North Penn Knights. Righty Keller Bradley now readying with his 41st pitch. And this one is sent to right field, drifting foul and out of play. Giving it a run was Hawks. But no chance to run that one down. I think it was actually on the other side of the fence. So 0-1 count to coin. Oh one fouled away on the right side. First time up, Bradley was able to get Coin to end the first inning. The North Penn with a runner in scoring position at that spot. Starting to pick up again here. Yeah, not only is there the wind or the rain, but the wind is making it really problematic for us because it is raining sideways literally that's the 10th foul ball by the way for the knights only through 43 pitches thrown by bradley bradley's set is 0-2 just outside close might have been too close to take but Bradley.
Rodney ready again. The one, two, down in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Ball's definitely gonna be slippery in these elements. It's tough to pitch in rain, obviously. And the other thing that pitchers don't like that much, wind. <laughs> and yeah. how that can move your ball and That ball had Make a you lot miss of, your spot. That had a lot of movement downward. Two, two. That's there in there. Go. Strike oh, three nice called. Pitch. And coin set down. That was One a, down in the fourth. That was a beautiful pitch by Bradley. Slider right in there. Nice movement. So with one away, Wetzel now steps up to the plate. takes strike one from Keller Bradley. Oh, one delivery, fouled back. So Bradley in front of another North Penn batter. Blows that one past Wetzel. Wetzel gonna play baseball next year at PSU Harrisburg, but set down this time by Keller Bradley, and there's two up, two down. Pitch number 50 coming up. Which is a pretty decent pitch count. The ball bunted, and it's a good one. That's, That's a, good a base one. hit. Yeah. Mm. Nobody gonna get Krieger is Perfectly placed down the third base line. A bunt base hit, one on, with two down for right. Loden Wainick. Bradley can't not let that falter him here. He's been really good. 50 pitches, two outs here in the fourth. Trying to make this game official. Would it be four and a half, three? I think we gotta get five in. Five? Oof. Here comes the rain. And the ball down low in the dirt from Bradley. Yeah, the rain had subsided just a little bit. And then another band comes blowing through the 1-0 down low. Two balls, no strikes. Now that's one of the few batters that Bradley has fallen behind. See if he battles back. It's a ground ball handled there by Hirsch at third. And his throw in time to get Wainick for out number three. So no runs, one hit on the inning for North Penn, and they leave one runner on base. So we are through three and a half innings of high school baseball and it's the Pensbury Falcons in front of the North Penn Knights, two to nothing. And we'll keep it right here, let you know that uh, today's game brought to you by DiLorenzo's Pizza. DiLorenzo's The Berg Pizza. Just down the street on New Falls Road. Thanks also to the Peruzzi Auto Group for complete automotive service. Trust the Peruzzi Auto Group for value and service on all makes and models. Peruzzi, big comfy waiting rooms in their dealerships, free Wi-Fi, and early drop-off. Peruzzi, service, open Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, visit a Peruzzi dealership on Business Route 1 in Fairless Hills, where their business is you. All right, we are through three and a half innings. Falcons with a 2-0 advantage. Got one run on a double steal in the second, and added an insurance run in the third. And now leading off the bottom of the fourth for the Falcons is first baseman Eric David. He'll be followed by Weber and Boraski. So that's your five, six, seven hitters. That's a pretty um, potent middle of the lineup yeah. for this Falcons offense. Lugara winds and delivers and David sends that one up into the sky. Brace calling for it at shortstop. And after the ball gets blown around a little bit, Brace makes the grab. 
for the first out in the bottom of the fourth. Good job tracking that one out there. Win obviously not going to help Rain as well. Shorts were a mistake on my part today. I thought it was safe. <laughs> now Ryan Weber up. He flied out to right his first plate appearance. This one also sent out towards right field and calling for it is Wetzel. And it's another fly ball out to right field for Weber and two up, two down in the fourth. Two pitches, two outs as well. Come on, give us the, um, the three pitch inning. Is there a name for that? Got the immaculate inning, all those strikes. Gus would know, Gus. Is there a name if you throw three pitches in an inning and three outs? It's not happening here, but. Lucky. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Ball down low from Lugara. Oh, it's coming down now. The 1 0. In there to Baraski for a strike. It's like waves of hard rain that just goes to uh, the 1 1. Swing and a miss. Lugara looking for his second strikeout, the one two. Just off the plate, good take by Baraski. Baraski going to Clarion University. After he wraps things up here at Pensbury, here's the two two to him. Sharply hit grounder, but foul. A little bit in front of that one. Well, it seems like. Officials, 2-2, two, two. Mm. swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And it's a 1-2-3 inning as the Falcons are set down in order in the fourth. We're through four complete. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on for Pensbury. And they continue to hold a 2-0 lead here in this high school baseball clash, suburban one league crossover action. And we'll step aside and return to Vic Napolitano Field in just a moment. Seem pretty determined to get this thing in. Yeah. But. I mean, I think if they were to call it, they would have done it already. Come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly. All right, Chris Bennis ready to get the fifth inning started for the North Penn Knights as he'll step into the batter's box to be followed by A.J. Briggs and Kevin Brace. Knights trailing the Falcons 2-0. And Keller Bradley now into his fifth inning of work has thrown 53 pitches. Make that 54 as that one's in there for strike one to Bennis. Through those 54, he's only thrown 16 balls, 27 strikes. He's made three batters swing and miss. And the first two are in there to jump in front of Bennis here in the fifth. 11 fouls hit off of him. Three hits allowed. 0-2 ground ball that Ryan Weber scoops up and throws over to David. Along with six strikeouts today for Bradley, two of them looking. He's only walked one batter. He's been really solid. That's a good start here in this fifth inning. 
in so, the rain. One down and now up to bat steps A.J. Briggs. Again, Briggs in his first varsity game. Swings through some fire from Bradley. That had some heat. Oh one. Fouled back and Bradley jumps in front of Briggs. First time up, he got Briggs to ground out with two on. And here's the 0-2. Just a bit wide. The one, two. Mm. Foul tip, but Baraski couldn't squeeze it. Pops out of the glove. Mentioned. Briggs stays alive. Gus mentioned former catcher, former legend. Um, mentioned earlier how much a foul tip could affect an AB. We saw that one there, yep. tipped out the glove. The one, two. That one fouled back. 14th foul ball by the Knights today. Briggs hanging tough. Meanwhile, the story is the weather. The rain continues to fall. The wind, like Ben was mentioning, 14 miles per hour winds, but the gusts are picking up to 25, maybe 30 miles per hour. The one, two pitch. Ground ball sharply hit. Kelleher is over there for it. Picks it up, throws to David in time to get Briggs, and there's two down here in the fifth. But it felt like earlier in the inning, the home plate umpire, Patrick Jones, even went out and just had a quick word with, with Keller Bradley, making sure the mound was still um, sound. You know he's going to say okay, too. He's a baseball player. There's always a window. Up to a point. I mean, for a pitcher, if that mound gets a little bit slippery, that can... Um, Doesn't look too bad from here. Oh, one. And I guess the only issue, like, if your plant foot is not secure, then... Then you then you have a problem. And Bradley looked like he slipped a little bit on that one as well. Let's watch him again. 2-0. -oh. Look good there. Pours that one in there. Two balls, a strike to Kevin Brace as we're back to the top of the lineup for the Knights. 2-1 is fouled off a little late on that one for Brace. It's a little bit of a slip there for Bradley out there. Nothing major, but you can see definitely changing direction on his plant foot when it goes down. Kicks around a little dirt there by the pitching rubber. Gets the one he wants from Baraski and delivers the 2-2. And that's popped back foul by Brace. So another 2-2 delivery coming up from Bradley. Misses low and away to run the count full. Three, two. Swing and a nice. miss. He struck him out. Gets Kevin Brace to end the fifth. That was electric. And set down the Knights in order. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on. The Falcons continue to hold a 2 nothing advantage as we're through four and a half innings of high school baseball on WBCB. Complete automotive service. Trust the Peruzzi Auto Group. We thank them for making portions of today's game possible. And thanks also to the Trentonian. Don't forget you miss any action here on BCB. You can read all about it in tomorrow's Trentonian. And thanks to Puss in Boots Tavern, Kicked Up Comfort Food at 934 Trenton Road in Fairless Hills. Enjoy the ambience of the Pocono Room and their own private bar. They also have a heated outdoor patio, all their great specials. 
at Puss in Boots, great for graduation parties. The tradition continues. Great food for the whole family and down-to-earth prices. Puss in Boots Tavern, 934 Trenton Road in Fairless Hills. Well, the other thing with the weather... New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. And for the Falcons, Mercura at the plate. I find an interesting Lagara for the Knights. Only had 47 pitches through four innings of work. Bradley was up to mid 50s or around 50 going in. So better pitching for Bradley, but Lagara able to work through batters a little more efficiently. Looked like kind of fooled Mercura on that one. Gets him swinging. Jumps out in front of the Falcon batter. No balls, two strikes. 50th pitch coming up for Lugara. I mean, Bradley almost had seven pitches through five. It's gonna take Lugara 20 pitches to get up near there. 0-2 oh, just a bit outside. Lugara's 1-2. Sent skyward, center fielder calling for it, and has it. So a fly out for Mercoro, one away. For Colin Kelleher. Colin Ke Kelleher scored one of the Falcons' two runs. Got things going in the third inning with a big double. Only extra base hit for Pensbury today was Kelleher's double. Yeah, that's the only extra base hit of the game for either team. 1 0. Just a bit outside. So it hasn't been a ton of hitting, more of a, a pitcher's duel, the 2 0. It's only 2 nothing. Straight back, fouled away, and a 2-1 count. Pensbury's been in a few of those. They were in one on Monday, 2-1 win. McClocksky pitched all seven for Pensbury. 2-1 delivery, and they say that caught the outside corner. Nice backdoor breaking ball. The 2-2. Kelleher spoils that one. Fouls it out of play. And already Lugara, he is set to go. He's, as soon as he gets the ball, you see him peering over that mitt and delivers the 2-2. Down low. And the count is full to Colin Kelleher. We yeah, Pensbury to... having to move some things around with the loss of James Schaefer, who suffered an injury. Payoff pitch. Ground ball over to Brace. Oh. Knocks it down, picks it up, throws. Not in time. Colin Kelleher beats the throw. Nice speed there by the Pensbury second baseman. It's going to so, happen in this weather. E6. As that looked like a ball that could have been handled by Brace. And puts one on with one down. And the Falcons flip the lineup. Charlie Cordisco. Officially in error. Took a little bit to get up there. Cordisco bends out of the way, one up and in. Yeah, bark at the park day today. We have adoptable pets here at Vic Napolitano Field. We got the little puppies, and um, they're, they're, they seem like they're doing better with the rain than the human beings. That's for sure. I've been like looking over there. I gotta go. Before see, the 1-0, they check the runner. Need to go see what's up in between innings, maybe. Uh, I love dogs, but I can really care less about those dogs right now. 
Gus, you don't have any more room for any more dogs in your house. I, I got too many dogs at my house. If I, if anything, I can add more dogs to them. <laughs> Try to get rid of some even more. The one oak pitch a little up there. Two balls, no strikes. If you want a dog, hit up Gus. <laughs> Gus at WBCB. 1490.com, is that the email? Gus Barber Media on all social media there you go. platforms. 2-0 pitch from Lugara. Popped up, drifting into foul territory. Ben Farley, the first baseman, makes the grab for out number two here in the fifth. Got some bullpen action for the Knights. Two different numbers going out there with Mitt, so not really sure. 17 and 20. Let's see who's going out there. 20. Ben Holdsworth getting warmed up as a first pitch strike for Evan Hawks. Only 62 pitches for Lugara. Maybe the weather, they want to get him out of here. The 0 1. Could also be on some sort of pitch count, I'm sure. And Lugara kind of. He kind of changes up his arm slot every once in a while and kind of... He's been throwing some sidearm this inning, I've noticed. Dips down like that three-quarter sidearm angle. A little Pat Nishak. 0-2. Oh, right there. And fouled out of play by Hawks. Falcons holding on. They got one run in the second, one run in the third. So far, I've held the Knights scoreless. The 0-2 fouled at the plate. Meanwhile, at least for the moment, the rain has slowed significantly. That's, that's a good thing. Wind has not. 0-2 pitch. Nice job there by Hawks to just throw the bat at that one. Spoil a pretty good pitch. Let's fight. Two down with one on here in the bottom of the fifth. Evan Hawks at the plate. The 0-2 is wide. is ready. One, two action. Looked like the same spot. <laughs> Inside with the two, two. And now a full count to Evan Hawks. Talk about fighting back. Was down to two. Fouled a couple pitches off. And remember how I mentioned he needed 20 pitches hitting to match Bradley? He's at that. He's 69 pitches, one away from 70 for Lugara. The payoff pitch tipped foul. And both teams now also have fouled the ball off 16 times. 3-2 count with two down allows Colin Kelleher to get a little bit of a head start. He's off and running at first on the pitch. And at the plate, swing and a miss. Hawks is cut down. And the Falcons are retired in the fifth. We're through five complete. And the Pensbury Falcons on top two to nothing here in the McCaffrey's game of the day. McCaffrey's food markets exceptional every day. I want to say thank you to the Peruzzi Auto Group for making portions of today's game possible. Visit a Peruzzi dealership on Business Route 1 in Fairless Hills where their business is you. Don't forget you missed the action on BCB. Read about it in tomorrow's Trentonian. And Thunder Baseball Ooh. is back for the 2024 season. 
Tuesday, June the 4th, and you can catch all the fun and excitement of a Thunder game throughout the summer. For ticket information, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com. Or call 609-394-3300. That's 609-394-3300. Post-game fireworks nights, Tuesday dollar dog nights, pork roll Fridays throughout the season, Trenton Thunder baseball, big league futures, major league fun. All right, we go to the sixth. Falcons scoring on a double steal back in the second inning. And they ended up plating Colin Kelleher after he got aboard with a leadoff double in the third. But those are the only runs of the afternoon thus far. Keller Bradley has kept the Knights off balance and works to Chase Jones. Little chin music for ball one to the North Penn catcher. One oh. Just a bit outside. So Jones one for two today. And in his first 20 plate appearances, batting 412 for North Penn right now. Getting a word of advice from his coach. But the way the rain was falling moments ago, felt like it was doubtful we were gonna be able to get to the... Yeah, well, it's not done yet. There's supposed to be more coming soon, so hopefully they can get this game done and over with before that. Oh, nice play hey. by Keller. Right spot, right time. Picks the line drive, one away. Shout out his dad, Dave. <laughs> What's he get a Primo? What's his order? LTO sandwich with sharp provolone cheese and sweet peppers. There you go. And that brings up Ben Farley to the plate. Oh, oh. In there for a strike. Ooh. Wicked stuff. Farley is going to attend <laughs> Coastal Carolina next year and still considering walking on as this is his third year as a starter with this North Penn team, the 01. I know where Coastal Carolina is. Uh, it's uh, kind of near Myrtle Beach. I love going down there multiple times. That's like the college of Myrtle Beach town is Coastal Carolina. I forget the mask hawks but I, or the mascot. I think it's like a, a bird or a hawk or something like that. I can't quite remember. Picks up the ball is fouled off. This is the biggest gust of the day. <laughs> no balls and two gust. strikes. Here to Ben Farley. Farley so far today, 0 for 2. Takes up high from Bradley. Bradley set at the belt, set to throw his 77th here, the one two. Sharply hit, but a foul ball, Farley in front of that pitch. The foul ball. Another one two, bounced over to Hirsch. Takes it on a couple of bounces and a strong throw in time. And Farley retired. Two up, two down in the sixth, and it brings Mason Coyne to the plate. Yeah, and really, besides that one little inning where he uh, put the first two runners on and was able to get out of it, though, Keller Bradley has been absolutely fantastic today. Only given up three hits. 71 pitches, could possibly go another inning after this if he's able to get out of this quickly. That's he's dealt with some base runners yeah. too. Like you said, he had a base runner in the first, there were two on in the second. Still not have a run up on the board for North Penn. That shows you what this kid's able to do and overcome. Able to work out of those jams. Had a base runner on in the fourth. He is their ace for a reason. Very he, good. He, he, he saw all the potential last year as a freshman. 1-0. I think, these North Penn, I think these North Penn kids are trying to hit their third base coach. I don't think they like them. 
It's I like mean, the they, six one they fouled right at him. They've hit 20 foul balls today. And they just can't figure out the timing for Bradley. Uh, you got to credit the pitcher switching up the spots and the timing. The 1-1, one, one, nice pitch there. Bradley today, the ball to strike ratios has been really good. 24 balls, 37 strikes through 81 pitches. The 1-2. Ooh, good miss. Tried to get him to offer at a curveball that bends out of the zone. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Good job by Coin to two, two, two. hold up on that one. Two deuces wild. And it's popped up out to center field. Back to get it is Cordisco. He's under it and makes the grab. So we are through five and a half. And the Pensbury Falcons continue to enjoy a 2-0 lead here in the McCaffrey's game of the day. As we go to the bottom of the sixth here from Vic Napolitano Field, we'll step aside and return here with more high school baseball. In just the Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609 609- 882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Well, for the Pensbury Falcons here in the sixth, Dylan Hirsch, Jordan Zerniak, Eric David scheduled to bat against Trevor Lugara. And you talk about how um, Keller Bradley has worked out of some issues Lugara's been pretty good out there as well. Had a 1-2-3 inning in the first and the third. A 1-2-3 inning in the first and the fourth, pardon me. It was in the second and the third that the Falcons got to him for a couple of runs. Maybe the last batter for Lugara. And it's a line drive under the glove of Chris Bennis out to right field. And Hirsch, a leadoff base runner with a base hit. Maybe not, I was thinking maybe they want that lefty-righty matchup. They, you saw the righty warming up down in the bullpen, but they're gonna leave him in for the lefty-lefty. I never up. noticed, does Zerniak throw lefty too? Or is he a no. righty and he bats lefty? I think he throws with his right, bats with his left. I'll have to check next time. Yeah, I think he throws left and bats left. Oh, oh he does. Okay. Okay. So he's a naturally lefty. Because I was going to say, you don't normally see a lot of kids at this age that throw one way but bat another way. There's a couple of guys. One other guy on the roster, I think, is a lefty-righty guy. It, yeah. There's still some. They just don't like it the other way. They feel more comfortable the other way, but... You just don't see it very often. You see, you wait for him to feel like get to a certain age or a certain period, then you start to develop both sides. And you never see a switch hitter in high school. Never. They're really, yeah, Joe, kind of rare in the MLB now too. Joe Beitler is one of those guys. He bats left and throws right. Mm, gotcha. I think he's the only guy. No, the other guy, uh, Kolenko, mm. bats left and throws right. One more guy. Carlton Crane might be in that category too. 2-2. Two, two, yes. Fouled away. Hope that didn't hit your car. Went over that way. Oh man, I'm parked so far away. Yeah, no, it ain't in our car. <laughs> parked back at the station just to, Yeah. Just to be safe. Yeah. Before the 2-2, two, two, Lugara throws to first. And Hirsch dives back in. Well, good thing we brought the 10 today. Yeah. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss, and he gets him. Zerniak is set down, one down. 
in the sixth. Third strike of the day for Lugara. And up to bat, Eric David. And Lugara has kept his team in this thing so far. As David gets into that one, sends it deep to center field, back, oh. and then coming in for it is Krieger, and he makes the catch. Man, that win really must have caught that ball, because you just saw him Oop. moving all types around. And he, he initially thought it was going to be way deeper than it ended up being. He ended up stopping, and then the wet grass, he slipped a little bit, but ends up making the grab. So that is a clutch play in center field. There's two down. And up to bat steps Ryan Weber. But you, you keep this right where it is. You, you kind of give the Knights a, a decent shot in the seventh to maybe try to mount a comeback. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you, you would love to try to get an insurance run here if you're up to bat. Before the 0 1 little snap throw over to check on Hawks. Oh, one. Weber gets into that one. It is deep to left. And will one hop the fence around third and into score. Dylan Hirsch. Makes it 3 nothing on a blast from Ryan Weber. That ball was smashed by Weber. The wind's not blowing in. Maybe that gets over the fence. Hirsch that was a shot. It gives them that insurance run. Hirsch high stepping home. Vibes are high. Really good team, North Penn. This would be a Penn's right able to pull this one out. It would be a really big Huge win. win. Yeah. No question. And you look at North Penn, they come in 5-1. So a team that um, you know, they haven't they haven't been on the wrong end of a, of a lot of games, and with the challenges of the wind, the rain, right now for the Falcons though you gotta seal the deal. Bounced foul at the plate by Boraski. And it'll be interesting to see who they send out to try to seal the deal as far as the who's going to be on the mound for Pennsbury. Do you, yeah, Keller does have 83 pitches already, and they have somebody warming up. I think it's uh, Aiden Kennedy. It is Aiden Kennedy out there. Who's a yeah. very reliable. We saw it last game. Yeah. It's dominant. Probably their best reliever all year so far, and it's been early, but he's definitely shown himself to be one of those guys. With how good Bradley has been, um, I, least, I think you at least gotta let, let him go out there for at least to attempt the first batter. If you get him, you let him ride, and if you don't, then you switch him. One one ripped, oh. but foul. Oh, almost took out a fan. Watch out there. Look out along the fence line, because Tyler Baraski's coming for you. Watch your head. He's a menace behind the plate and at the dish. Count hold the ball, two strikes with two away here in the bottom of the sixth. Falcons have gotten another run on an RBI double from Ryan Weber. This one sharply hit on the ground. Wainick handles it, throws over to Farley in time to get Baraski. And last chance time now for the North Penn Knights and the Pensbury Falcons make it a little bit more difficult as they score their third run of the afternoon. They plate Dylan Hirsch on a double from Ryan Weber. And they hold a 3-0 lead back out on the mound. For the Falcons is Keller Bradley. And we'll see if they're gonna have him try to go the distance in this one. Remember, if you miss any of the action on BCB, read about it in tomorrow's Trentonian. Outstanding local and national sports coverage that you can count on seven days a week. It's all in the pages of the Trentonian. And thanks to the Peruzzi Automotive Group, Visit a Peruzzi dealership on Business Route 1 in Fairless Hills where their business is you. When the weather was really looking bad, I disconnected our microphone and uh, I was thinking, I don't know what we're going to, I don't think we're going to have a post-game interview. But now I'm thinking, 
we may be talking to our DiLorenzo's player of the game. I got to hook it back up again to get Ben ready. Got to get Ben ready. To our, go here. Our, so. our shining star, Ben Goldstein. And for the North Penn Knights, Wetzel, Krieger, and Wainick. Uh, I think it's starting to come back down a little bit. I feel something. But as we said, Keller Bradley is able to get out of this one, two, three. Penn break coming out with a win. A much needed win too. A big time early season win for a team that has been kind of up and down, roller coaster, sputtering at times, showed good signs at times. You come out of this one with a win, man, that is a confidence boost, and especially not, after the Schaefer injury. And not only are you missing Schaefer today, and are you playing um, one of the, uh, a team that you have some history with, but this was a North Penn team that made a deep run in the PIAA playoffs last year. Yeah. So you look at this kind of as a measuring stick and they got off to a five and one start. And they retained a lot of talent from last year. So it's not like a lot of guys left this team. There's a lot of talent still from last year's team that did went deep. I think this shows a lot of Keller Bradley to be able to come onto the mound in a big spot. We, we talk a lot about he's the number one guy for this Pennsbury team, but you gotta think he's still only a sophomore. No, we, we gotta put that in perspective. Winds and delivers the 1-1, one, one, a breaking pitch that's fouled off. And I'll tell you yeah, what. I think I said it was a battle of juniors, but yeah. uh, Bradley's not even a junior. Yeah, he's, a so he's a sophomore. He's an underclassman. And for at times, we've seen some uh, defensive miscues for this Penn Ray team. Defensively today, they have been stellar. Not one error given up and has really solidified behind Keller Bradley today. The one, two, taken out to right and is in for a base hit, extra bases for Wetzel. Over to grab it is Hawks and sends it in to Weber. But Wetzel with a stand up double to start the seventh. That's the first extra base hit today from allowed by Bradley. We'll see how long they keep him out there. Doesn't look like anything's happening right now. No, I guess, uh, I think I think Coach is gonna let him go one more. And Kenny's still warming up out there, down the line in right field. Yeah, can feel the and here comes the rain, rain yeah. We were good, we were good. <laughs> we were good for a little bit. Meanwhile, we have a pinch runner. Out there, Christian Barnes takes second. We had a good run. Thought we could get a nice interview, and maybe we'll still, by the time this is over, it'll be over, we'll see. Aren't the Phillies home tonight, too? Yeah. Krieger at the plate, uh, yeah. Topper says there's a window, but uh, there's always a window. Yeah, there was a window for this game, too, and we got spritzed on half of it. Spritzed I'll on. tell you what, though. This has been a stellar game. This is playable. This has been, this has been a great game. Kind of like you described earlier uh, with Ka a good uh, pitching yeah, performance, good not defense. Of, not a lot of high scoring. We've had crucial hits here and there, runners advance here and there. Excellent stop there by Baraski. I'm not going to just go over that. That was beautiful to keep that in front and keep the runner at second. Bradley's on his 89th pitch. The rain is really coming down now. You don't want this one to get out of hand. Yeah, you, uh, you also don't want the field to be unplayable at, at this point. We've, for most part, the fields look great today, which is kind of a shocking from all the rain we've gotten and some of those wet times we've had during yeah, this That's game. a strike. It's held up well. Nice pitch there by Bradley. One thing I don't like is the rain is making it colder, though. I am a little chilly. Yeah, we should not have worn shorts today. No, 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 no. It was nicer out earlier. It was very nice earlier. 2-1 delivery. That's a strike. <laughs> two nice balls, pitch. two strikes now as Bradley looks for the first out that, here in the seventh. That was the 40th strike thrown by Bradley Tay on his 91st pitch. Tell you what, though, there's a guy behind the backstop right now with the radar gun. I would love to see what he's clocking. 2-2. Two, two. Oh. oh! Just a bit outside. <laughs> Maybe a touch low. Yeah, it had to be low because that was paint in the black. Oh, my goodness gracious. Makes it a full count. Krieger one for one with a walk. Sends that one to center field. Cordisco back for it, under it, makes the grab. Tagging from second base is Barnes. 
And he slides into third. They got it in check at second. Coach Pacey appealing that the runner left early, and now I think they're going to say, never mind the appeal. Yeah, I think you, I think Base umpire Russ Lickfield says safe. I, I'm not sure what the motivation to tag up from second base on that play is in a three-run game yeah, when you're already in scoring position. Because if you get out, then it's two outs, nobody on. If you just stay, you still have a runner in scoring position. Just a little bloop single will something punch through the hole will score him. Yeah, you, that was, you get to move up a bag, but that run yeah. means nothing. That's very, yeah, it's very dangerous. I, I, I wouldn't have done it, but thankfully they were able to uh, move the runner over to third. But High risk, kind of a low reward. Yeah, but if you're, you're Penn's Bay right now, you just... Popped up, drifting and out of play. Eric David giving it a run. Like you said, Chris, that run doesn't even really matter right now. So if you're Pensbury, just even just think that guy's not even there right now. Just try to get the batter at hand, get the out. If it's a ground ball, let him score for all you care. Just get the out at first, make it a two-out game, one out to go. Bradley in front, his 0-2. Poked foul. Had a battle here, though. See, the JV game finished up. Wonder if they won or not. Or they were even, even to. Uh, they've been uh, they've been pretty dominant. Have so. they? Yeah. A lot of good young talent on that. A lot team. of good young talent. I love to hear that. The O2. Down in the dirt. Yeah. How about this, Gus? Well, now with the uh, wind picking back up again, we gotta see if we're gonna be able to talk to our player of the yeah, game. Man, yeah, I am so know. sorry. I love <laughs> listening to you talk to a player, but it's not looking good right now. It is really not looking good for us. Still love you, dealer ends as the bird go get some pizza. Somebody's getting somebody's getting a pizza card. Somebody's Down low from card. Bradley. That's what I call it. Not a gift card, it's a pizza card. Pizza card? Pizza card. Yeah. You're not getting a gift with it, you're getting pizza with it. It's pretty much like a gift. The card. gift is pizza. Yeah. <laughs> make a, make a good the point gift that keeps on giving. Two two. Foul ball. Oh. Yeah, battle at the plate. Wainick trying to hang in there. He's got Bennis on deck. We're approaching triple digit pitches, Gus, or Chris, Gus. Both of us. Yeah, this next one will be 100 for Keller Bradley. Brady kicks and fires and gets him. All ah. third strike. Bam! And Wainick heads back to the dugout. He's out number two. I believe we got a pitching change coming up. Yeah, just ruled too many pitches. 100 pitches. He had a heck of a day. Long walk for Pacey, though. Yeah, I'm not sure where. He... Oh, they want to fix the Doing mound a little mound maintenance. Uh, maybe off. they're going to keep him in, just just in the mound? No, Aiden's out there. I see him. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think they just want to clear up the rake a little bit. Putting down some diamond dry. Something like that. They need literally one more out. Come on, Mac, you got that. 6.2 innings for Bradley. 100 pitches, 31 balls, 43 strikes, 5 swing and misses, 24 foul balls hit by North Penn. Only allowed 4 hits. No runs, 8 strikeouts, 3 of them looking, 1 walk. An excellent, excellent outing from Bradley today. Dominant. What, uh, what year you guys graduate? 26. 26. 2026 stud. Shout out to 2026. <laughs> Ben's in there. My cousin's in there. Big Keller's year. in there. Big year. Big year. Big year. World Cup. All World Star Cup, game. All Star game. Yeah. 20, 20, I was talking 50th. to Justin before the. I think he said he graduated in 2019, right? Right. And the the one player has a brother who was a left-handed pitcher for North Penn who graduated in 2019, right? And that oh, seems okay. like wasn't that like last year? Yeah, yeah no. it felt like it. That was like five years yeah. ago. Now. <laughs> And 26 seems like it's pretty far away, but that's yeah. two years, two years. Away, yeah. 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 2026 will be my 10-year anniversary of me graduating high school, so that's that's fun to hear. You old fart. Yeah, th thanks, Ben. <laughs> All right, pitching change for the Pensbury Falcons. Pretty impressive day for their sophomore starter, Keller Bradley. Another impressive performance. Hey, don't forget Thunder Baseball back for the 2024 season. They begin on June the 4th. 
catch all the fun and excitement. Ticket information at trentonthunder.com. That's trentonthunder.com. Or call 609-394-3300. We'll be down there for Pensbury a couple, little bit. Not too far away. Aiden right. Kenny on the mound. Hey, by the way, on Saturday we got a special morning baseball hookup between the Pensbury Falcons and the Hopewell Valley Bulldogs, which is cool. Ken Harrison was a Pensbury Falcon player, yep. and um, so this has been a long tradition where they do a coaches versus cancer, like a pink out thing. There's some fundraising elements to it. Sometimes we're here at Vic Napolitano Field, last and then everyone. Was at Trent Thunder. Last yeah, year. yeah, we were at the the ballpark. And uh, this time we're going to be at Hopewell Valley. Um, so check that out. 10 o'clock is the first pitch for this Saturday's high school baseball hookup. Nice and early. A little different. I'm looking forward to it. I love morning baseball. It takes me back to when I was playing the game, you know, those uh, early morning tournaments and stuff like that. Little league stuff, yeah. Oh, Little league great. games always start it at like 10, 11. Always. 9 o'clock. You get horrible. the game done at 12 30. You'd stay at the field till like 4. Eating food at the snack stand, playing wall ball. Oh, it was the greatest. Oh, wall ball, the best. You remember? I called it Suey. We called it Suey. Suey, yeah. Yeah, Suey, wall ball. I actually was just talking about that today to somebody. Good old days. Aiden Kenny now in for Keller Bradley, and he is tasked to get the final out of the game as the Falcons are up 3 0. Yeah, just, just technically just, a safe situation now? Yes. Yep. There you go. Three, three runs or less. Uh, and just check the radar. We have 20 minutes before heavy rain starts coming. So. All right, let's hurry it yeah, up. We let's go. Hurry it up. Let's ben, go. sorry it's not looking great for you, let's but go. Come let's on. just hope the equipment doesn't get wet. Well, Kenny obliges with a first pitch strike, so that was good. Takes a deep breath, and the junior kicks and fires. Just a bit outside and for what ball a, one. What a contrast of pitchers, too. Caleb Bradley, just a very big and stature on the mound. Aiden Kenny, a little bit shorter, but both of them have great pitching com uh, mechanics. Both of them wearing tight pants, though. <laughs> Never understood the tight pants. Ben is so far today 0 for 2 for North Penn. Looking at the 1 1, yes, offered at it. Couldn't hold up one. and falls behind. No balls, two strikes, and oh. the Knights down to their final strike. Yeah, one strike left. The one two from Kinney. Good miss. Maybe try to get him to chase. Yeah, good miss. But a good eye by Bennis. One strike away. Aiden Kenny's 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And that's the ball game. The Pensbury Falcons get past the North Penn Knights, improving their record to 5-3 and three, and dropping North Penn to 5-2 and two with the loss today. Falcons getting runs in the second, third, and added that insurance run in the sixth inning to give them the three nothing victory. And today's game on WBCB made possible by all of our great sponsors. We thank them so much, including McCaffrey's Food Markets. This has been the McCaffrey's Game of the Day. All right, I think we can still do a post game. Right, I don't know. Do what do you think? Right, we got, we got. We can do it quick. We can do it quick. All right. Well, we got. Who, who's our post game player? Keller. Keller. All right. Keller Bradley will join us in just a little bit. We're gonna step aside and return in just a moment. Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609 
882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. You are more than just a heart patient. St. Mary Medical Center's teams get to know you, which can help them diagnose a problem and start treatment faster. St. Mary's cardiovascular team offers the latest imaging and device technology, testing and surgical procedures you'd expect from a national health system with the personal... Back to Vic Napolitano Field and with our player of the game, Ben Goldstein. I'm here with the dealer runs as the Berg player of the game, Keller Bradley. A hundred pitches today, dominant through six and two thirds. Let's talk about the weather. Tough to pitch in this conditions, but you were able to manage through it. How'd you do it? Well, pretty much just pitched how I usually do. Kept my head in the game and just threw hard. Threw hard indeed. Dominant out there today. What was working for you and how were you able to manage around this heavy North Penn lineup? Fastball was working real well, slider really getting down in the counts and uh, pretty much just tried to throw my best like I usually do. Big win for you guys, a huge win early over a really good North Penn team. Kind of a back and forth season so far. You're now um, back two games above 500. How massive is this guy? F is this win for you guys as a team? This is a huge win. We were looking forward to this game, really needed to win this one, and we came out and just did our job. This is your D. Lorenzo's the Berg player of the game, Keller Bradley. Thank you very much. Chris, back to you. All right, thank you, and uh, thanks to Keller Bradley for joining us. And like you said, the team just did their job, and they earn a huge win here today over North Penn, a 3 nothing victory. And today's game brought to you by St. Mary Medical Center, McCaffrey's Food Markets, the Revere Restaurant, BCWSA, Fletcher's Garage, Jammer Doors and Windows, Puss in Boots Tavern, the Trentonian, the Trenton Thunder, the Pensbury Baseball Parents Club, and Di Lorenzo's Pizza. And our player of the game is Keller Bradley, and he'll get a gift certificate for some pizza from Di Lorenzo's, the Berg Pizza. We thank them for being with us. And as the rain falls, we're going to wrap things up and get on out of here. Thanks to the crew, um, Gus Barber doing our video engineering. Thanks to Darnell Turner behind the camera. And... Uh, also to Ben Goldstein for helping us with stats and post-game interviews, and thanks to you for being with us. One final time from Pensbury High School, it was the Falcons 3, the North Penn Knights nothing. High School Baseball on the WBCB Sports Network.